Hatch notes can be hard to understand. So here's an explanation of the more technical changes we had recently. Every cosmetic is assigned a equip region. This occupies the back region. This occupies the face. Valve didn't want us to wear three shirts at once. So the game restricts you from wearing multiple cosmetics of the same equip region. You can only have one cosmetic from an equip region. But there are two region classifications that have extra rules. Glasses, besides being unable to be worn with other glasses, is also unable to be worn with face or lenses cosmetics. Whole head cosmetics, besides whole head, also conflicts with cosmetics classified as hat, face, or glasses. Except, this extra rule about glasses or whole head cosmetics doesn't get enforced if you equip your cosmetics through Quick Switch. Quick Switch was created when only two cosmetic slots existed and never got updated to acknowledge the third. So you can equip a whole head cosmetic in your third slot and use Quick Switch to equip a hat, face, or glasses cosmetic in your first or second slot. You still can use two cosmetics of the same equip region, but the extra rule is bypassed. On September 26, Valve updated Quick Switch to now enforce these extra rules. This fix was controversial because many expensive unusual cosmetics had their value predicated upon the Quick Switch oversight. Two days later, Valve walked back on it and unfixed Quick Switch, stating that they will evaluate the situation. If you as the server wanted to tell the player that the map spawned a portal next to them, how could that be communicated? One option is to send the entire file name of the particle to players, but this would be very inefficient and a strain on internet traffic. Instead, TF2 uses tables. When the player first joins the server, they are sent a table of particles. When the server wants to tell you about a particle update, all that needs to be said is a number. Your computer can then look up the particle on that row number and do whatever it needs to do. Maps, notably Halloween ones, often use custom particles to make the maps more visually interesting. So when you load them up, the map would add their custom particles to the particle table. The problem was that the server wasn't clearing the table between maps. So if you loaded up one Halloween map, then another, and another, the table would eventually hit its limit, meaning TF2 had no room left to track particles. This leads to the exploding red crosses that show up, which is the particle equivalent of the purple, pink, and black when there's a missing texture. The server is trying to tell your computer to render a particle that doesn't exist on the table, so the fallback is to render the red crosses. This issue has been fixed by having the server properly clear the table between map changes, but the size of the table has also increased. When you die to a headshot, rather than ragdoll, sometimes an animation will play. This animation is supposed to render where you die, but sometimes it will happen at map origin instead. TF2 uses three coordinates to track where you are, and map origin simply refers to the point where all three are zero. If you had more than 60-ish ping, the server would mistakenly overwrite the position of the death animation, causing it to teleport to map origin. This has now been fixed. This also fixes backstab and energy weapon death animations, since they all use the same system. This patch doesn't fix the other issue where players would very briefly appear in your face when they died though. For Jungle Inferno, Pyro got a new melee weapon, the Hot Hand. It's a glove that goes over the Pyro's right hand. Presumably, to avoid clipping, they gave the Pyro a new hand body group, which basically means they can hide and unhide his right hand in the game. In the process of doing this, 
they cut off the tip of the Pyro's middle finger. So now, after five years, his fingertip has returned. Except, this body group isn't even used. If you no clip inside the hot hand, you can see the Pyro's original glove still there. So the Pyro's fingertip was cut for nothing. The Sydney Sleeper used to have red darts in first and third person for both teams. Twelve years after its introduction in 2010, the darts can now be blue. Weapon scripts define several attributes of a weapon, one of which is what sound it makes. Flare Gun Revenge is the Man Melter. In its weapon script, there used to be an extra entry for its reload sound. So this patch removes this extra line. Except, none of this matters. First, the game only acknowledges the first instance defined. So, this second entry for the reload sound is already ignored by default. Here I changed the shotgun reload sound to the gravity gun. Now if I define another reload entry here, nothing happens. Second, the man melter doesn't technically reload. Similar to the sniper rifle, the man melter is like a minigun, just that each shot takes a long time. Reload in the context of weapon scripts refer to reloading a clip, and the man melter doesn't have a clip. So even if weapon scripts don't ignore the second entry, it still wouldn't make a difference. Though to Valve's credit, removing that line did save us on 38 bytes of storage. Maps have the ability to apply conditions to players, such as giving them uber or crits. One condition is being gassed, which didn't make you burn when shot at. This has been fixed. They also fixed what happens when a map puts you in a bumper cart. Before it used to snap your point of view elsewhere, but now it maintains your direction. Funk No Build is a tool mappers can use to say where engineers shouldn't be able to build. This update allows no build to be initially inactive, then active after being triggered, and destroy any buildings within its bounds. This is used for the update to upward. On upward, after the third point is capped, this shortcut is closed. In the past, if you build a teleporter here, and the door closes, it becomes a one-way door where it will open for players who teleport in but not anyone on the outside. Now you can still build a teleporter there, but when the door closes, that space gets marked as no build, and any buildings in that space will explode. Though if you somehow get into that space after the door closes, it still opens for anyone trapped inside. This basically allows maps to change a player's model. TF Logic CP Timer is basically the system that allows maps to associate a countdown timer with a control point. Previously, this only worked for red control points, so if you flip the team colors on the group keep, the map wouldn't work. Now the timer can be applied to control points of both teams. They didn't claim that this would work, but neutral control points with timers are janky.